Joe is somebody who I don't think enough people know who you are and what y'all do, but he's been involved a lot longer than what some people realize, building out a lot of power infrastructure, um, knows the freaking power side of things and the infrastructure side of things as well as anybody I've talked to. So yeah, man, yeah. glad you're here. Finally. You come hey, from a power background? So, yeah, I spent about the first 20 years of my career, um, about 10 or 11 of that, I was overseas building deep water offshore oil rigs and okay. production platforms and wind farms and stuff. So big, heavy offshore construction. And then I it's came really back. big in Kansas. Yeah, well, it's basically <laughs> as far away from Kansas as you can get, like on the, on the South China Sea building, running pirate blockades, right? But uh, came back and then I ran, uh, got my MBA and ran Honeywell's global smart grid business. Okay. And so that kind of led into wow, we're incentivizing a ton of this renewable intermittent generation and we have, mm. we're going to have a giant flexible load problem. And asking people to turn their thermostats down when it's hot outside is not the answer. Right. <laughs> what are we going to And it was, it was basically an unsolvable problem until it, essentially Bitcoin mining came around. Like you couldn't get the amount of flexible load at scale to manage at a grid level. Unsolvable. Unpack that problem a little bit more. So we originally designed the power grid, and I, by we, I mean the U.S. government basically signed in a series of laws that said anyone can make a utility, and all these little towns across the country made their own utilities. But in general, what they did is if you had people here or a factory mm -hmm. here, you built a power plant there. And then over time, you'd build lines connecting the cities, so if one power plant is down, you can send the power. Well, then what happened was, and that was thermal, right? Coal, right. gas, nuclear. Um, and over time, we began incentivizing renewable development. Well, we didn't necessarily build all of our centers where or our cities and our, our factories where the sun and the wind was the most optimal. Right. So now we've separated out. We've put all this distance between them, as we know, which is the congest ultimately results in the congestion we talk mm -hmm. about so much and, mm -hmm. and all of these things. But the intermittency there was also never designed in the grid. Right. Like we essentially built that grid to deliver electrons in one direction, steady state around the clock, right? And now we're trying to kind of redesign the 80 year old system on the fly with all the renewables. And, and the problem is you could manage that. The grid was really like a top down kind of almost command mm -hmm. structure where power plants could coordinate. They could say, if you're turning down, I'll turn up or everybody turn up or turn down. You have controllable generation. Wind and solar show up when they show up. And you, you, yeah, you can turn them off, but that's not usually the problem. I mean, that's a problem for their economics, but it's not really a problem for the grid. It's the problem when the grid needs it and they're not there. And mm -hmm. so now we've, it, we have to balance that somehow. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to need that load on the grid side that is able to like turn on and off. And Bitcoin's the frontier species there. I think there's opportunity there with some of the AI stuff. Um, we're still learning more about that. In theory, hydrogen is, although I'll admit I'm not a believer necessarily mm -hmm. yet that that's real, but there's certainly a wall of money. Um, a lot of people have been staring at it with batteries for so long. They think that batteries can be the, pro the part of the solution. And I think they are. But when you're talking about gigawatts of power yeah. that you need to move around, the capex cost of those batteries is like trillions and trillions of dollars. That's so what just, I was going to ask is like what for a battery type of setup to be scalable what kind of cost would you look at when you compare it to like a bitcoin mining facility that can take that much load with that small footprint too so you know we talk when we build infrastructure depending on costs and the size or whatever you you know you're in the hundreds of thousands of dollars a meg mm. batteries are hundreds of thousands of dollars a kilowatt holy cow yeah see that's something people don't talk about a lot like, yeah, you can go get some battery stuff going, but it the the cost, I mean, we're far away from that being a scalable, like, yeah, like a Bitcoin level scalable. At, at the edge or for like load shifting, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. there is value there, but yeah. you only get it for a couple hours mm -hmm. and it's only a little bit of a, a right. pop, you know? Right. Now, I think there is a future certainly where you're going to see blended facilities mm -hmm. or them as part of a larger flexible load campus mm -hmm. because certainly they do some things very well like frequency response and you know some of those really fast responses that help smooth out the power um, but if it's like oh uri is coming yeah we, we need to you know yeah you can inject 
power for a little bit, but we need to structurally remove demand from the grid for a period of time. Mm. You, I mean, this is this is the thing. I mean, this did, is the thing that does it. Did you see so, um, what's the HUD eight lady? Jamie Susan Leverton. and Jamie I think yeah Sue and Jamie yeah she tweeted something the other day about um man it was a nuclear facility group like talking about they didn't really come out until you got into the actual study they did and there they talked about Bitcoin mining but they were talking about Bitcoin mining as basically the base load and and as a response tool for some of the nuclear power facilities so it's like when you get to that level and they're realizing how acceptable it is and how reliable it is, I think it's, I mean, that's, we talk I mean, about it all the time, but it, it's inevitable that this is going to bleed down. to Yeah, that's where, level. I mean, that's like the core part of our business, right? Mm -hmm. Is we, we go to probably 20 to 25 conferences a year and five of them are Bitcoin conferences and the rest are energy conferences. Really? Yeah. 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 And the, the, the thing is it fixes it fixes economics for renewables. Mm -hmm. It fixes economics for thermal. It fixes economics for mm -hmm. the everybody is gonna wants the ability to fix that shape right. and that controllability, especially at the cost profiles. But it's still like a ton of education. The industry is co very conservative mm -hmm. because you don't want to run into what I call the Syria problem, mm -hmm. which is if you well, lose well, yeah, power for seventy two hours, you basically turn into Syria. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Like if, if you have a sustained outage of the electrical grid over a large swath of area for a long time, I mean, for con the context I always give is in URI, mm. ERCOT lost power for eight minutes. Right. That was eight right. minutes. That's crazy. So think about 72 hours, right? Yeah. All your food distribution's gone. All your gas stations are all reset. Man, like everything's broken. This reminds me of a book. I think it's called <laughs> Going Home. Uh, but it basically it was like society falls apart completely after like, a five day period. Right. It was just like it's a disaster. Crazy. So yeah. and he laid it out and was like, Oh shit, I yeah. think this could actually happen. And I mean, I mean, that's probably one of those things that's up there with like Bitcoin is very important and a very interesting yeah. tool. And I think it's gonna be a a huge potential driver to move things forward. But it's right up there with like, let's not have civilization fall into little tiny right. pieces because we get so aggressive with mm -hmm. um, you know, with some of these this grid stuff. So there you got to overcome that when you go mm -hmm. talk to these power plants and the utilities, et cetera. And we've had a lot of success at that this year. Um, that's where we just focus on multi hundred megawatt co-located mm -hmm. custom designed power deals. Um, and really we're focused on the infrastructure where yeah. we're, we're want to, we think, you know, we want to be putting 500 megs to a gig of mining infrastructure in the ground. Right, and we didn't even say your company's name, but Atacon yeah, Energy. Yeah, At Atacon Energy Solutions is the name of the is the name of the firm. Uh, I'm the principal. We've got a, sm a relatively small team, um, some great partners. We'll do. Um, we've had a a great first year helping place a lot of power in a lot of sites, and uh, are kind of doing some large scale development work now up in North Dakota. We've got a uh, 400 megawatt. Uh, PPA directly with the power plant behind the fence with it. And mm -hmm. so what we what we do is we essentially tenant it out, right? Because there's a big, w one of the big things you want to think about, or we think about on this is the, you immediately get a bunch of the mining community that comes out as like, that's like massive centralization danger. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if we're as fully aligned there where you think if you're delaminating it a little bit and you've got and I, this is going to go like oil and gas, where you're right. going to have a couple integrated players and everything else is going to be D, where mm -hmm. you're going to have someone's going to own the the asset, the oil, right. the dirt, the ASIC. Mm -hmm. Someone's going to own the infrastructure, the rig, the well, et cetera. Someone's going to be the, the oil field services right. company. Right. You're going to have different groups of financing that uh, that finance the different layers. Yep. And so we want to focus on the layer we're really good at, which we think is finding really attractive locations and then helping to finance and deploy mm -hmm. um, world-class institutional infrastructure. Because there's the, um, you know, kind of the next co last couple, six weeks with everything that's been going on in mm -hmm. ETF space. Yeah. Um, it, it's not a big leap of logic to think, okay, well, ETF's going to get approved. Mm -hmm. You have seven of the largest asset and real estate owning entities in the world 
are now going to have Bitcoin ETFs. They're also seven of the largest corporate power consumers in the world. Mm, yeah. And as soon as they realize, hey, I can put these um, if I just take a position in infrastructure or if I just take an ASIC position using infrastructure and I'm getting Bitcoin at a 60 percent, 20 percent discount to spot and I'm just converting them into ETF shares. Why would they not? Why do would that? you not build a million? Right. 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 And so they're okay oh shit right yeah, like, that's yeah, good. yeah but this goes i know the teams at luxord and um, a couple others to name a few have been doing great work on the derivative side mm -hmm. but it all comes down to like what is your institutional grade infrastructure because these guys like blackrock fidelity vanek they're not going to go buy a barn that's been repurposed in you know right. rural ohio yeah. you know but yeah. they will buy you know Homeland Security secured standard sites behind the fence mm -hmm. at a power plant that's been operating for decades with very reliable, you know, you just have very, a lot of world-class infrastructure mm -hmm. and yeah, you're going to, you're going to probably pay a small premium on the build there, but the right. customer quality you're going to be able to attract to that over the long term is going to be huge. Right. And so kind of looping all the way back around is we're, we kind of tenant these things out where you have, you know, different groups that are, that are taking that capacity. And so mm -hmm. while the, infrastructure may be somewhat centralized the actual operators that control the hash are are different right so you're not having a, a, a single organization being like, oh everyone's going into one pool one you know so one kind of animal are you guys running the site operations for miners or are you guys just focusing on getting the site to where it's like development ready and so, then so we'll offer we've been working on not yet. Mm -hmm. So we're working on offering a man kind of a managed hosting offering. But even then, I think that's outside of Atacon's scope. I think there's a couple companies out there that are have, have done some great work on building their operations as a service. Mm -hmm. um, you know, certainly, I think Foundry's done some good work. Greenwich has a great team. You know, there's a, there's several groups out there. Yeah, there. I think and, Compass is doing it now too. Yeah, yeah. Compass is, mm -hmm. Compass and the guys over there have a, are are working on it. And so I think. Building all of those, I've ran operations businesses for a long time. Like they're very hard mm -hmm. yeah. and they're very different than right. kind of what we're doing. Yeah. Um, and if you've got these guys that they have all the operations and procedures, mm -hmm. fully trained staff, the ability to deploy quickly, we would rather partner with them closely right. and, and help them be successful in building their businesses. Did you hear that foundry? <laughs> <laughs> so if I understand this correctly, you guys go... Like with, with this one project you have with the with the power plant, you secure the PPA. Mm -hmm. How far in the site development do you guys go? To where I mean, it's literally ready to plug in, plug in some ASICs. So in this case, so we're <clears throat> this first campus is going to be interesting because it's going to be a blended mix. About um, sixty forty is going to be sixty percent containerized and forty percent mm -hmm. buildings. Yeah. We'll be building the buildings all the way to the rack. Um, and then on the containerized side, I think we kind of, we generally, we don't really want to take a lot of responsibility on those containers because mm -hmm. the designs are all very different. There's good products out there. There's also bad products out there. There's also yeah. products that have been sitting out in the sun for two years with nobody managing them because of all the bankruptcies, mm -hmm. et cetera. And so we'll essentially give you a, I call it a Bitcoin trailer park. We'll, yeah. we'll put down the pads with the plug. Mm -hmm. You bring in your containers and you can, you know, energize from there. Right. Um, I think that's a very interesting model we talk to the utilities a lot about, right? Because they understand doing things like spending money on concrete and electrical equipment. Yeah. They don't understand the building data centers or running their own data. And so your customers are mostly existing miners or are you trying to go in and convert some of the power players into miners? Um, so interesting, this, uh, the power plant we've partnered with, they actually have like a six megawatt immersion facility on site that they built because they wanted to play around with it. Mm -hmm. with, and it's, Really? The nicest immersion facility I've ever seen. Really? It, it's crazy. That's awesome. That's good to know. <laughs> Way over. I'm telling you, man, the utilities, they, once they start they, pouring They in. see it. And, yeah. and this is like right up their zone, man. This yeah. is this is right in there. Um, I think I think the conversion comes when they see the megawatt sales. Mm. You know, I, I think there's varying degrees of conservatism around getting exposure to mm. Bitcoin. But I think certainly they understand and are beginning to more deeply understand the benefits of the flexibility, the benefits of having that like co-located offtake. Th utilities are a very interesting business model where their customer base is geographically limited. 
Like it's very rare. And I know like yeah. I think Lubbock is switching from SPP to ERCOT. Right? I like, saw that. But that's right. like very at the margins, right? Yeah. Like you, if you're like a small town, you, that's, that's your service area. And so if you want to build generation to serve that, you're captive now. You don't have a second customer. Mm -hmm. You know, even if even if you're in ERCOT, you're you have ERCOT, but you don't that that's your one cost. That clearing price is, is you can get other customers through the market mechanisms we have. But it's very interesting for some of these regulated guys in the southeast and, uh, you know, where they can. Oh, well, we could we could sell our off. We could we have an international product we can sell. Now. Yeah. And right. so we can sell our megawatts internationally. That that that's basically you're opening the market up for them. That's right. Yeah. And so and that's yeah. it's an education journey, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to come in. I think the the markets are going to get there faster, the deregulated areas. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly, you know, I've had one of the five largest utilities in the country tell me as soon as we can get an eight percent return, we'll invest. Wow, wow. It's too risky now. Too much return. Yeah, yeah. It's, That's what's it's so too, wild, it's, it's isn't too it? Too volatile. They There's want volatility much, down. They want it very, and they'll like, trade right. vol down volatility for down. But it, so profits. It's, it's all about they. All these guys have different drivers, right? right? And yeah. we all and it's I, the, a lot of the space kind of gets dialed in on ERCOT, obviously, because it's a it's a heavy hitter, and the market the market areas in general, mm -hmm. and they kind of just think about oh, if I'm in one of these regulated utilities, I just have I'm just a taker. I, right but they that's, don't yeah there's all these other pieces there with economic development mm. various kind like the demand res way demand response works is very different in regulated markets than in deregulated markets but it's still there mm -hmm. um and so we think there's a tremendous opportunity there over the next five years yeah um but it just it takes a little bit of time it it does i've actually been doing more uh like pjm stuff lately yeah. and there's some really interesting stuff it, you, can it, it, you can get some really cheap power prices like it's in the right spot yeah in the right spots um and then even in oklahoma like depending on the service level that you're at like you can get some pretty cheap rates especially now they're doing an adjustment on their fuel charge um it cracks me up everybody like rushed in fuel charge adjustment rushed out, right fuel right charge adjustment, yeah rushed yeah and it's like man <laughs> it's like, just <laughs> like, like let's look over the zoom out you know what i mean we said that in bitcoin all the time so zoom out and calm down and like let's look at this there's exactly. some opportunities that get overlooked sometimes but on, you, because you do so much work with the utility level like how are they or how are you seeing them handle collateral issues and like exposure to miners from buying this large amounts of power because obviously we had the bear market feels like things are coming out right now and some people are getting all excited again which i want to ask you about that too but are you seeing them change how they're looking at collateral or are they uh, making any type of adjustments to try to work with miners to make it more reasonable because you are taking so much so many megawatts your your collateral is it's huge it's a, not a small number right. right yeah and and so i think so there's a couple ways to attack this as an industry and i think a lot of this is going to have to be the mining community is going to have to come up with better structures to right. reach across the aisle mm -hmm. and that's kind of part of the thesis by what we're trying to do at Atacon, where mm -hmm. if you have, if I own the infrastructure and then the miner is separate, that reduces counterparty risk, right? Right. If I have seven mining customers at one site instead of just one, that reduces counterparty mm -hmm. risk. If you're able to pay quickly, and there's some, Sonoda is a great example mm -hmm. where they're doing some great work in the space, right? Where they're, uh, you know, if you're taking your AR from 30 days to one, Mm -hmm. that's a big deal that's a huge amount of that that pot and so you it's not a oh look ballard's devastatingly handsome let's give him a great deal on collateral like there's <laughs> Thanks, there's guys. a little bit of there's a the, a walk there if only it was that easy um, if only it was that exactly <laughs> I jinx it, I so easy. Uh, but i think there's there's a journey there but the, they are getting more sophisticated with that but mm -hmm. i think that also comes with a expectation where a lot of the desks they talk power, man. They talk power and megawatts, and you have to be using the same language that they're using mm -hmm. um, in order to get the the flexibility that you're looking. For. Right. And we and we help a lot of companies with that. We do a yeah. lot of consulting work around that. We help with structuring products with desks on how to build minor specific products. Mm -hmm. You know, I call you know at a high level. There's there's a lot of ways to we call up utilities. Some it's funny we call up a lot of utilities, but when you know, we've had conversations with towns. We're like, well, what's like your 92% price? 
Mm, yeah. What's your price yeah. if I only take power 92% yeah. of the hours and you choose the hours? Yeah. And it, like, I mean, a lot of these guys are still using Windows at Windows 3.5. On yeah. The, yeah. Know, like, so there's varying levels of sophistication across the market. Mm. You've got to kind of think about how you're going to meet them in the middle. Um, and jurisdictional friendliness matters. Mm. You know, there's no point in banging your head against the wall in, in jurisdictions that are relatively okay. hostile. But, you know, we have 2,000 utilities in the U.S. and ostensibly they all like to sell megawatts. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, there's there's one for everybody. Yeah. Uh, I think you'll see it. It's never, it's, it's going to take a little bit of time too for the market to mature, right? Mm -hmm. Like none of the, even the large public miners, no one has what would be like a battleship balance sheet, right? Where yeah. You're, I mean, you're talking, these desks are posting billions of dollars a day to ERCOT. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so they're like, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know that, that that's, that goes back to another thing I've talked about and we've talked about before is, uh, you know, sometimes in the mining space, we get caught up in our own little like Bitcoin, Twitter, Bitcoin yeah. X, whatever now. Um, but the reality is like, we're still very small players in the overall scheme of things. And we had ERCOT grow from 67 megs to 86 megs mm -hmm. in like two years. And that's a big number. That's a big, that's a big and, number. And maybe three of that was miners. Right, right, right. It's so there was another 15, yeah, 5x more from the Teslas and the homeowners right, and everybody right, else's. Right. So it's like we, we still are early. There's still a long Very ways early. to go. And what seems normal to us is not normal to like a guy, a, a regular dude at the utility or at an oil and gas company or other, some other power generation place. So like we have to find ways to keep educating them and, mm -hmm. and working with them. But so you mentioned some of the bigger projects that you guys, you, what, what's your kind of scale that you so we, look for? So we focus in kind of two sectors. Mm -hmm. So one is what I would call utility scale, uh, projects where you're looking at hundreds of megawatts um and you're co-locating with a generation source or maybe like a very large substation or like nodal mm -hmm. transmission mm -hmm. right and so those are going to be large projects probably have some level of greenfield work done with them take a little bit more time depending we try and short circuit that as much as possible but yeah. you know you have a little bit more just lead time on getting that stuff done um, and then we'll focus a lot on, uh, I would call it like the five to 50 megawatt segment in front of the meter where you're, whether you're industrial redevelopment. So like, you know, uh, carpet factories and, and old packing plants mm -hmm. and wood, uh, you know, carpentry operations or wood, uh, processing plants, lumber plants, you know, things where, um, and I think this is something we don't discuss enough. That's really interesting is. You know, if you have a small town and they have a small utility and they had one mill, right? And yeah. the mill's gone, right? That has been destroying small towns in the U.S. for 25 years, mm -hmm. 50 years probably. And if you go in and you you can replace that load, they can't, they don't have the population base to pull in like an auto parts manufacturer mm -hmm. or a, a, a widget manufacturer where mm -hmm. you need hundreds of jobs. They need like 50 jobs or 10 jobs, but they need to replace that power consumption. Mm -hmm. Now you can go in and replace it with a, a mine. And this is a collaborative thing, right? Where you there, you are arm in arm with the city on this stuff. And, you know, the, the eventual end game there is obviously instead of raising taxes in the town, you just build a bigger Bitcoin. Yeah. Right. And, and, and now you just have equalized your tax rate forever for all right. your businesses. And now how Rockdale's is a good example of that was right. They've like done they, some great yeah, work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, so. and so I think there's I don't think that model's perfected yet either. Right now. I, I think not at all. I do worry a little bit about the large mega sites that sit in front of the meter. Yeah, no, because I, 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 I if can... you think that all of the power desks and congestion traders don't know all the terms or generally of those PPAs and they're mm -hmm. not planning their trades around those expiries, mm -hmm. their generation that they know. Like you just have a lot of adversarial risk. Yeah. You know, like Bitcoin is probably the purest free market out there. The oil market's relatively pure still, mm. but power markets in Texas, man, like that is <laughs> that is a wild, wild west of a lot of actors. Yeah. And, and you run into some situations where you could you could be on the bad side of some mm -hmm. trades there and you're you have you're, trouble yeah you're in trouble right and and that that is 
probably one of the bigger risks that that is out there that isn't technically i guess bitcoin related but it is it's like man that's something that can catch you and yeah and yeah you you, you got to have a, if, the other have a side generator not, sitting in your right, pocket right right, <laughs> right. <laughs> somebody's watching this stuff yeah. and they're they're going to plan to make their money off of some of these opportunities that might pop up but yeah um and it's funny that you said that about the uh you know the mills and all that kind of in small towns i'm actually working on a deal right now that is it's similar in a way it's just underutilized power at a privately owned facility yeah and you get cheap rates you got good it, the power's already there it's like easy to go in and build and and it's another one of those things where you like look this was something that will probably create you know 15 jobs 20 jobs for for this deal uh, in a place where there's not very many jobs. And, you know, that's a, a tribute there's, to Bitcoin mining and kind of what it can do to revitalize communities. And, and I think there's a ton of there's a ton of attack surface in PJM mm -hmm. around existing uh, manufacturing industry. Yeah, I um, think those are some of the best opportunities. Some up very there. interesting stuff yeah. you can do there um, to. Uh, penetrate that market very, mm. very broadly. Yeah. What's the what's the most interesting? <laughs> what you can say, Joe, without giving away your your Joe Million secrets. So wasn't Joe Millionaire a show? Was there a show, Joe Millionaire? So. There is. That's this guy. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> honestly, like I, there's such a lack of. There's so much. We're so early. Uh -huh. There's so many more people we need in this space. I don't worry too much about like keeping like right a ton like of big stuff, secrets, like, super secret, yeah. but. I think at a general level, what I would say is there is a lot of, if you look at how industrial rate plans are constructed, mm -hmm. they pay on their peak power usage during the month. A lot of times that is when two or three days out of the month, they're running their biggest piece of kit. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the month, they're drawing much less power. Mm -hmm. So you have a shape now that needs to be filled. And there is a lot of work to be done still to figure out exactly how that works in all of the different ways. Um, but there are definitely multiple, multiple very large companies that can be built um, mm. deploying salt against that. Yeah, I think you're um, right. And, and, and this kind it, of decentralizes it a little bit. Too, it, it, right? does. Yeah. it does. It yeah. does. Um, and there's, um, I would say, the second level of institutional grade infrastructure behind, you know, at a power plant, maybe it's something like, oh, it's at a Coca-Cola bottling plant. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. oh, well, that seems good. Yeah, I, I there was a group when I first started J. Um, I don't, I don't care if they, I don't, I don't think they'll mind me saying this, but um, Ally Ally Energy Services, I think. Um, I can't remember. Sorry, guys, I can't remember the name, the exact name, but. What they did was they went into like um, warehouses, um, factories, and kind of re like evaluate their entire power structure, um, try to green it up some, yep, um, and look for efficiencies to kind of maximize the use of their power that was available to them. Yeah, I ran that business at Honeywell. Oh, did you? okay. Yeah. So it's basically so, it's the same type of deal. Yeah, we white labeled that service for like twelve of the twenty five largest utilities. In and so that's so is that kind of how you looked at bitcoin and was like this would be great for this because well, that's what they yeah, did they're so like this would be wonderful i kind of fell down the rabbit hole about probably three years ago now or mm -hmm. so three four years ago and i just started looking at it and i was like oh well this like fixes the thing yeah like, this is the thing yeah. you need like this solves all of this stuff yeah and so we're gonna need um you know i think i've, I've seen a study i know i've quoted this before but you know, there's studies out there ranging between 200 to 500 gigs of renewables on the grid mm. by the end of the decade. Wow. Right? Gosh. Or flexible load need, yeah. I believe is yeah. what the studies are, is between all the renewables and all of the new load growth and everything else, we're going to need two to 500 gigs of flexible load. Jeez. By man. the best estimations, we are somewhere in the 50s to 70s. Man. So we need to. 7x the amount of mm. flexible load in existence um in the next seven years man six years it's almost 2020. where's, that, where's that capital going to come from yeah it's a great question because we're not <laughs> subsidizing it so how do you how do you have a a model that is 
market profitable to generate flexible load. Man. <laughs> I don't know. What kind of tools that's, are out there? Well, Gents. <laughs> yeah, I guess Bitcoin money would be good, right? But that's Who's where we pay for it. You know, we, we we're going to need, but if you break that down into, okay, let's you break that down into, okay, we need 30 gigs of mining mm -hmm. a year. Or let's say mining yeah. takes 70% of it, right? So that's 20 gigs of mining a year. Mm -hmm. The entire Bitcoin network's like 14 gigs. Yeah, 14 I would to say, 18 gigs. There's right? not even enough machines to fill that. Yeah. Load, is there? Well, I mean, yeah, you're. They're not manufacturing that much. Dude, we're gonna need. We're gonna need more of everything, right? Wow. In order to in order to do that, and that's just like to stop having serious situations. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. we're talking. That doesn't include any other use cases mm. for mining, of which there are many, and there's a mm -hmm. bunch of great startups out there working on it on different things, whether it's heat capture or, um, you know, other applications that mm -hmm. were methane abatement you know there's a ton of interesting applications but when you look at like how the mining industry is going to segment over the next 10 years like there's mm -hmm. definitely going to be institutional utility scale fleets yeah. that are really more focused on the power side and and we'll have obviously they'll be having uptime but i mean you're gonna have sites where they get built to run at 25 percent uptime mm -hmm. where are you guys if you don't mind us asking where are you guys coming up with your capital like what what what's your backing for these infrastructure projects so this is a good question um this is where i don't i probably keep a little bit more private because yeah, a lot of yeah. our capital stays a little bit more private yeah um i think in general the mining community is very inefficient in the way they deploy capital. Mm -hmm. um, we have a wide variety of partners we use. We also, it's and it's a little bit like a traditional development play. Like right. you can get banks to underwrite things. That's the difference. Like, yeah. Yeah, because you guys have actual, <laughs> you have collateral. You, the, you, have, they, a, you have a building or, right. a, or, a, or infrastructure right. that has Transformers a- Transformers. Yeah, that you can, you know, yeah, you have, right. you have, and you can underwrite a business model, right? right? And you right. can, you can get capital. Back. That's mm. not all of it, but I mean, it's, and it's also kind of more about building those traditional capital mm -hmm. stuff, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of, I feel like a lot of miners just kind of go, okay, I want to raise the money with either equity or debt, and I want to own the whole mm -hmm. thing. And then you end up like, that is a lot to eat. Yeah, it is. It is just a lot to eat. And, and, and so when you do that, you, one, it reduces the speed you can move because your capital is all tied up in one place. It increases your business risk. And it's and it's really hard to go convince a bunch of people to give you mm. to give you funds to right. trust me. Yeah. Trust me, bro. It's gonna work, man. I'll go build yeah. it. And, and, yeah. and like we run into that a lot. It'll be yeah. different this time, I yeah, promise. It'll be right. different this <laughs> time. And I mean we've you know, we've got, you know, decades and decades of real estate development, large capital projects and energy knowledge. Mm -hmm. like we we've done a lot that helps i mean you can you can get and we try and stay in our lane mm -hmm. you know we don't mm -hmm. go try and say hey let's make a big asic play right we're we're like we want to go put metal and concrete in the ground yeah it's what they understand oh, yeah it's same with oil and gas companies it's you got to talk hard language, space right? Right. And, right and 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 it's and there's learning it's a ramp up there you know certainly you, you we learn a tremendous amount from mm -hmm. every you know every project we do where you just this space is evolving very quickly yeah you're still fi figuring out structures investors are still figuring out structures like rates and returns are all over the place mm. that people demand um but it has been interesting because we've been able to um just using some different paths than most of the most of the community does we've, we've been able to maintain pretty strong capital access mm -hmm. That's um, good. As we've as we've begun to grow, that's good. Being on that, um, the infrastructure side, it's capital's easier. I'm not, it, it, you know, it's just sounds, easier, yeah, right? Just and and easier. so it's not like a magic trick or anything. Yeah. Right? I don't have like a mystical. I don't have like three mm. mystical billionaires that are like, oh, Joe Millionaire, <laughs> <laughs> Joe Millionaire. We can give him some of our billions, <laughs> right? It's more yeah. like, oh, we meet. We spend a lot of time meeting with like development banks and yeah. big banks and small commercial banks and financing partners and mm. insurers. And, you know, we, that is part of what we do. And that's where we think we bring a lot of value where, right. you know, building this internally as, as a, as a Bitcoin miner is a lot of resources, a lot of time and skill sets that are very different than the rest of your team. Mm -hmm. And so we feel that we are a great partner in that case for miners looking to deploy infrastructure.
What did yeah. you think of the uh, Northern Data? You see, they bought it's that that, that uh, Saxit site. Saxit right? site, right? Um, it's a large front of the meter site. Yeah. Um, I think uh, that they. I think energy management strategy is mm -hmm. going to be critical. To right. deploy. I think it's in a good location. Yeah. It's in, you know, that ERCOT South area. Um, it's I not as oversaturated yeah, as I, I, the well, West. Well, and, and South is interesting because the wind has a totally different profile than, okay. than, than ERCOT West. Mm -hmm. And so you just think about how you want to trade your position there mm -hmm. differently, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're essentially long volatility on the grid, which is and mm -hmm. almost non-existent on the mm -hmm. and so when you are thinking about okay i now have this giant whack of long vol uh of long vol demand sitting in aircraft south how do you want to play that mm -hmm. you know uh but i think it's a, an interesting side i think you're gonna see that may be like the end of the distressed site sales mm -hmm. so to speak and i know that one yeah. had kind of been that had been distressed right. and in sacks that had been working. And I don't know the whole story, but you know, I, I know those guys have been working on developing mm -hmm. it and then they, you know, exited out to the Northern yeah. data guys, um, which are, you know, I've heard, you know, good things about all those teams. I, yeah. I know everybody's been working that deal. Um, but, but we were not, we weren't really super close to that. So I don't mm -hmm. have a lot of like inside baseball. Yeah. Um, but is that though something that you would see, like, would you guys package up a site like that? And yeah, we have the ability to do that. Yeah. Oh. Um, I, I think we would probably part it out a little bit mm -hmm. to make it, it, we just find it easier to get. I, I think in the market right now, you're seeing, you do still have some demand for those hundred megawatt sites plus, but like when you, it's like, when you get into talking to them, like, I mean, a hundred mm -hmm. megawatt site, you need like a quarter billion dollars in cases. Right, right. Man, uh, what like, I've seen lately more is it's a shit ton of money. It's like it's a fantastical it's, amount. Yeah, of and it's like I and then if you don't do it all at once, like you've got all that other sunk capital into that well, site and, just and sitting there. And I think there. that's where like we got our first on this North Dakota site. Like we got our first call it thirty megawatts online in about seventy five days, mm -hmm. which is like that's we're, fast. We're proud of. We feel yeah, that's pretty that's fast. Really that's certainly fast. like there's definitely groups that have built mm -hmm. faster, but we'll have the full the first full couple phases of call it 230 or so megawatts mm. will be up and hashing in the next by by middle next year yeah probably. yeah and so when you when you start talking about that i think that's something we feel our model unlocks is because mm -hmm. on a lot of these to the capital and the sizing mm -hmm. it, it's not desire or the actual construction speed that slows people down it's literally getting the finance right getting it built getting, getting that capital. much money to why, freaking why does everybody go so big is it a big dick measuring contest and you think that if you're i the, think if it you're was the, before oh, yeah, if you're if you're the biggest then all of a sudden the capital is going to flow to you well, and you can just keep snowballing it I into something like bigger flex. <laughs> conversely it is difficult more difficult to get super cute on the power side the bigger the yeah. size so there's no economies of scale it's actually harder um you can get economies of scale on some pieces yeah I, I think, think certainly having standardized designs mm -hmm. is something the industry is slowly choking itself towards right way far from oh man but, it's so but different if you're looking it, at right. it as a power opportunity you're like how do you you know if you want to if you want to really get aggressive in ERCOT on mm -hmm. like how you're going to deploy a thoughtful strategy you probably would rather have five 20 megawatt sites mm -hmm. than than you know 125 right. i agree because because a lot of it has to do with like nodals too right and you can i think that i think some of the stuff that um is being talked about now where there's some open conversations with ERCOT and mm -hmm. the legislature around letting other and i'm not the expert on this there's a mm -hmm. bunch of guys in, in the space in texas that are way more up on this but essentially letting other loads take nodal pricing so you okay. don't have to be batteries or a co-generation mm -hmm. facility um, that would be a big one. But mm -hmm. right now, the only way to really get that nodal pricing is if you have a direct PPA mm -hmm. with a generator and it's oh. priced at that nodal okay. reference price. Okay. Um, well, I just, I feel like if I'm going to buy a site right now and I don't have the money to build out all 100 megawatts, I don't want a 100 megawatt site. Like I, I want... A well, and it's also, 15. are you a real estate company, right. an infrastructure company, or like a mining company? Mm -hmm. You know, I think these are different things and yeah. we don't talk as, as much yeah. about it. You know, like, yeah. it's like, shouldn't miners be like 
lease first. Yeah. Where you, you know you're gonna you're gonna have to put it. It's a unique building, right? right. It, it's you don't see, um, like you know when when all of the big drug stores expanded, right? Like Walgreens was putting up a ton of capital to mm. build those to build those drug stores to spec. You know, mm. CVS was putting up a ton of capital to do that, but they don't own the land. Mm. They don't own the building. Yeah, right. But they put that capital in to build the custom sites so they can make money on it. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I think y you need to understand if you're going to have a heavy real estate or infrastructure position, or if mm. you just know that like that's part of your stack is you're going to, you're going to have to pay some build out to get it in, but then you don't have the burden of that real estate long term. Now there are, you know, family offices, mm you know, kind of private capital that wants that real estate. Yeah. Right. And so it, it's just... Are there many people in the space currently that are essentially acting as landlords? I think there's more um, coming up now, but I think it's more... It, I don't think it's like an organized uh, type of... Gr like organized groups that are doing that. I think people are realizing I can make money by acting as a landlord with a power generation facility nearby. And... I mean, I like to think we're a little bit more intentional about it, but yeah, we well, well, you, still you pretty, guys are. You guys it's still are. pretty early. <laughs> but like, there's not a ton of those. Yeah, there's not a ton of those. Like, it's not sex sexy. Yeah, right. It's, it's, it's not yeah, a sexy business. Yeah, it's yeah. it's dirty stuff. It's breaks. blue collar. You got to fix right. it. Everyone yells at you all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, you just get yelled at all day. Yeah. Like, it, like everybody yells at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. So, like, are you? Tenants yell at you. Power plant yells. Everybody yells at you. Are you guys basically? You're building it out. And oh, like your North Dakota site, yeah. Right? Okay, so you got the North Dakota site, and you're basically going to have a bunch of different tenants out there. Mm -hmm. um, are you? But do you have one uniform kind of deal you're doing with them, or is it like we work with you depending on kind of what your need is, and we'll we'll provide yeah. some different level of service here versus there, even though it's your same facility. We're very build to suit. I yeah. think we've learned through the process on this site. Some of the structures we prefer more or how mm -hmm. we define them but i mean right. we'll see everything there from i'm gonna throw a line over the fence and you're mm -hmm. gonna build you're gonna have to approve i'm gonna have to approve the designs and the electrical and make sure that it's safe yeah but right. you have full development control and you want to yeah. you're like oh i can build it cheaper than you joe i want to go build it you let them do that great okay have a great go mm -hmm. for it yeah um and then there's also groups that want it all built for them mm -hmm. and to potentially um, you know, finance that cost out. Mm -hmm. There's other groups that'll pay up front to get it built out because mm -hmm. they want a small, a lower lease rate over time to okay. improve their power economics. Um, there's groups that'll sign, you know, basically a building lease where we'll mm -hmm. deliver them a, a powered shell um, mm -hmm. and then they're, they're going to bring the operations in. So all those structures are on the table with us because it's, it, there is a lot of texture in what yeah. people want. I think we'll see a couple of those kind of become more dominant through this mm -hmm. next growth cycle. Yeah. Uh, but certainly as you get people into the space that just want the ASIC exposure and know they don't want the real mm -hmm. estate exposure or the infrastructure exposure, you're going to see, um, I think that shift. I got one for you when you talk about after, after yeah. the show, but the um, red light goes off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you think? this because i do feel like you know we're fixing the havings coming up and just because it happened in the past doesn't mean it's going to happen in the future but we we if bitcoin reacts the way it has in the past mm -hmm. and we go into another bull run um what do you think this one's going to look like from an institutional level as opposed to the last one do you, do you feel like they're Based on because you do talk to a lot of financial services or financial groups that are more traditional, like are they looking at it a little bit differently? Because even though you are doing infrastructure, they still probably want to know mm -hmm. who's your end consumer, right? Sure. And so, do you feel like there's been a shift in them at all, or like what? I guess how much have they been educated over the past two three years? So. It's definitely more known. Yeah. Um, I think there's definitely, it will be a strong data point to see mm -hmm. what the market does through the having and which types of facilities perform well. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, this assumption that hash rate is going to drop 30%. I don't think it is. I don't see it. I yeah. think we saw that happen with the, as we kind of, 
had that double top and then you just kind of saw that minor mm. capitulation like we were, what 12 18 months ago all the s9s like got flushed right. out of the market right. we just saw it happen mm -hmm. like that was you could you could have almost you were almost able to see for four or five months like we generally everyone was like where's all this power coming from and mm -hmm. it was a lot of just high grading the fleets yeah you know you were just seeing more stuff put in i think you're I think the ETF adds a tailwind and, mm -hmm. you know, if you consider most of the fleet globally now is probably S19 bases or better. Right. Right. I think those are very survivable through that mm -hmm. having with the right, with the right power strategy. Mm -hmm. I did um, see S9s got profitable again. Like, right. Yeah. They're like, well, two weeks ago. I think there's a lot of value in S9s long term. Mm -hmm. for, I mean, not a lot of from value. a different give me some warehouses full of them for a dollar. But I've got some right, ideas right, right. on on how you can at that point, they're basically just a load bank, right? That's what that you can say. run. You can use them. You can use it for right. other things. Right. Um, but I think but again, when you look at the amount of hash, and like the amount of terahash hash that's out there that is would drop off, it's the base is much bigger. And the and a lot of the older stuff mm -hmm. is already gone. Yeah. And so I don't know that you're going to see that capitulation. Now, you may see some intermediate stuff where people are just shutting off, waiting for like where their economics mm -hmm. go under. And you're, you're certainly going to see. I, we still find a lot of these like small towns will go to. They'll have one guy that set up a couple mm -hmm. megawatts five or six yeah. years ago that's still ticking away. But if they're a little bit loud and so the neighbors don't like them, yeah. so they're like, are you going to do buildings or, yeah. you know, like you still <laughs> see those facilities? I think. You may see some of those be become more difficult mm -hmm. the economics mm -hmm. um that being said a hundred of those is like one one riot site right, right? or one right. met one rockdale or one helios mm -hmm. you know yeah um and they're pretty resourceful i mean those, those mm -hmm. there is definitely a wave of american miners that have grown through a couple cycles now that are reasonably well capitalized. They're very savvy. They carry very low debt mm. and they're kind of growing now into that five and 10 megawatt sizing. Yeah. And so I don't think it, I think you're going to have it's doubling hash rate again is so hard. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't think people understand how much power we have to put in the ground <laughs> right. to double the amount of hash rate. I mean, mm. efficiency gains help, right? New machines mm. help like you get an incremental, but we're not, what were S9 skin? Like 18 terahash or something? Uh, yeah, 13, 14. 13, 14 yeah, terahash. Yeah. We're not going up to like giga, like we're yeah. not doing 1,000 terahash. No, we don't have petahash no, miners even close to on that. the same yeah. power consumption, right? right, we're, right. So you're not going to get a 10x in your, yeah, in your efficiency. In your efficiency again, to, yeah, right. In your power efficiency. Mm -hmm. And everybody's focused more on, on a, you know, the efficiency race is going, you know, 20, 19, mm -hmm. 20 watts per terahash, 19, 18. Mm -hmm. It's not going from 60 to 30. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's just a different. It's like that cell phone growth chart, right? Yeah. Like you you had this explosion on a smartphone and then they start tailing off on like what but they actually I, do better. And so yeah. I think you end up with that. I think that helps put a floor on hash. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I think it because you're going to need to start when we talk about some of these other markets mm -hmm. like the PJMs that have pockets. Well, if as hash price rises, it's almost like the tide rising as far as turning sites green mm -hmm. as far as being able to deploy there right but it's not like there's a bunch of 100 megawatt sites sitting around no. with bad power pricing that are just waiting to get no not at all so i i think you i mean i wouldn't be in the space if i wasn't bullish on bitcoin mm. uh but, but i don't see the i i just don't see where you're gonna put a lot of these sites out of business, right? Mm -hmm. Like when the miners went, when you had the a bunch of turnover in sites, none of the sites stopped hashing. Right. The LLCs changed names, but nobody but turned nobody, them off. Yeah, right. Like this yeah. stuff's pretty durable, mm -hmm. uh, it, because it takes a long time to build. And it's hard to find. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. I, and if you think you're gonna see that, I, I know I saw every. I talked to a couple people that came back from the Hong Kong one that Bitmain does whatever, mm -hmm. a couple months ago, mm -hmm. WMNS, I, I can't remember mm -hmm. the acronym. Whatever they were, was, a bunch yeah. of them were all bowled up on, on cutter. Mm -hmm. Cutter is four gigs. Yeah. Their whole power grid is four gigs. Yeah. I That's was two gonna... large power plants in America. Yeah. Like there's just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The, the size is not size. Right. Yeah, and so when right. you're talking about where is this growth going to come from? I, I think it's going to come from large scale, mm -hmm. 
large scale co-located deployments and those take time to put together and they mm. take a little bit of time to build. And once they're in, they're not turning off. Right. Yeah. But very bullish on the institutional side. I think you're, you're, that's, I think that's a lot of the price action we've seen mm. is, is them starting to get in and get comfortable. You're right. I think so too. I do think so. Do you have any price predictions for Bitcoin by June? This is always such a sign. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> What is that? Just do do we have a good soundbite or not? Uh, no, this is going to be the first the leading on the show. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Joe, Joe says, says it, Joe uh, Millionaire says Joe million dollar says Bitcoin. It's a million dollars. <laughs> I do. I think we'll see some positive price action, but I think if if anything, it'll be a lot like the last few halvings where you know you're going to have a delay. You don't have it. It's not like this immediate price shock. Like like if oil lost half of its production in a day, that's a problem. Oil price would. Just go to and in, in, I mean it would be ten thousand dollars. Right, right. Um, Bitcoin is it doesn't work the same way because we don't utilize it the same. You know what I mean? It has but less like it, direct. It, impact yeah, it's not you. being used as much as for like global collateral right. payments yet because right. it's still so early. Right. It would be like production dropping in half when we were still scooping it out in buckets and pencils. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's and exactly. if you did, it'd take a while for everybody to notice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, there's not like, that many people. Use, oh, the oil shipments like this week. Well, I guess I'll use the candles. Right, or, right, yeah. You know, um, I do think you'll see. I think we'll be higher than today mm -hmm. in June. Um, I think hash price will probably be higher than today. Higher than today <laughs> too. Um, uh, I, I, I don't. At some point, you kind of got to realize. You know, BlackRock's not doing this to sell forty thousand dollar mm. Bitcoin to their portfolio members. They're doing it to sell quarter million dollar Bitcoin to their portfolio. Members. Right, right. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a like, reason, right? You mm. know, like they're gonna, you know, all, it doesn't take a lot, a big string of effects to have like, yeah. the, oh, well, this is our platinum premier ETF share. Each mm. share is a tenth of a Bitcoin, but you got to pay twenty five, you know, twenty five grand a share for these. Right, you know, yeah, the unit bias goes both ways. Yeah, yeah, uh, and so I think, where where do you have Jake? Where do you think? I have no clue, dude. That, that's you're Joe Million. You're Joe Millionaire. No, yeah, I, <laughs> I think I hash price will be lower than it is today. I'm curious. I'm know. curious if it'll. I don't if it'll, know. We, that'll be that would be an that's interesting the one. one I, I, place I mean, that's on. the one that matters a lot to the miners, right? But um, that that's the one that because I do think the hash rate is just going to keep growing. So it, I don't. Where's I mean, it coming from? I don't know these S twenty ones. Will the S twenty ones be out yet? This this last, I think this last big growth we saw the last quarter was a lot of the stuff that was put in in the last bull you run that so? was finally getting energized. Yeah, that that that's very very possible because uh, like most of the S nines did come off, and so you were filling those gaps with newer machines. Now. Yeah, I mean if you want to raise hash rate ten percent, hash hash mm -hmm. rate ten percent, you're gonna need what? Five Helios's or Rockdales. Yeah, what are those? I mean, if there were uh, five of those being true. built right now, we'd know them. True. Good point. I saw he's Joe Millionaire. Do <laughs> you think there's any like super secret shit going on? It's pretty hard to build a site that big. <sighs> yeah, that big. Yeah. Be tough. Like it, everybody would know. Everybody. Would know. It's not a big space. Mm. I mean, there's. It's just not. Like we, the sacks at one, everybody kind of knew that was coming on at some point. Um, you know, your guys, North Dakota stuff, I've known about that for a while, yeah. But I mean, there's, I mean, there's these are that's two, yeah, that's two. Like, <laughs> where's the other three? I mean, only three more, that's 10%. There's not that's a ton adding, more, yeah, you know, like 200 eggs is what 10x a hash, right? 20X right, a hash. it's not you enough know, to like there. move the 400, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> That's true. I mean, and that stuff's going to take a while to get on. Yeah. Even the northern data st stuff down there with Saxon is so yeah, still going to take a while to get on. But yeah. Um, are you guys doing anything international? Because I might have something for you, man. I got a meeting today. I'm. I mean, I'll look at anything. Mm -hmm. um, I think that capital's harder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, rule of law is a real thing, mm -hmm. especially if you're trying to finance things. Yeah. Um, import exports. I mean, I lived in. I lived as an expat for ten years. Yeah. Certainly Where at? Uh, Singapore, Australia, and Brazil. Dude, he, this is like most interesting guy in the world. Kind of, <laughs> kind of do over here. That's awesome. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, that's where I was building oil rigs. Really? Yeah, we would go to the hardest spot you can find and build the most complicated thing you can find and, <laughs> and have it run by um, the lowest denomination of education. I was going to say the least educated <laughs> person you yeah. can find. So. Exactly. 
<laughs> build a billion dollar piece of equipment and have zero college degrees on board right. and have it go operate in the middle of the ocean and dynamically yeah. positioned within one meter. Of Which is crazy Nazis. that those can get financed, <laughs> right? Because yeah. it, it's like, yeah, we're going to have a bunch of people who can't read operate this facility. But and, and the thing to remember, too, is like even a lot of those, if you look at like the drilling rigs, Lots of turnover on those mm. companies. Oh, you, yeah. you really have you have a couple of big ones that stick. I mean, obviously Transocean at the top, the couple that stick mm. around, um, and a lot of their rigs they self finance the construction on mm. a lot of, them. or they're like, oh yeah, they'll do. I mean, they have access to capital markets; they can have more tools. Yeah, um, but they're it, it's hard to think. Yeah, to, to, really. To get, well, yeah, we, it's 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 it works almost exactly like. Um, like a hash price forward would mm. be for a, a mine, you know, mm. like if they're signing a two to three year contract on a 20 year asset, yeah. you know what the rate they're going to get the next two or three years. Yeah. And then you don't know what you're going to like, get. Uh, like, maybe it could be a hundred thousand dollars a day. It could be 700. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so it, it's some interesting correlates. I think mm. that's partly why we see a lot of oil and gas in, uh, in the mining space is because the, you just think about risk a little bit differently mm -hmm. if that's kind of the the market you grew up in mm -hmm. and it, there's a lot of parallels yeah right 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 there is a lot of parallels i mean obviously we talked about that a lot too it's just i mean even you talking about the like after the having if you take you know using the example in pennsylvania we're taking half the oil out of day like that is how early we are in this yeah. space though you know it's that's where we're at so it's it's interesting but yeah. Do you have to when you're talking to the money guys? Are you talking much about Bitcoin economics? Like, do you have to explain it to them? I I'm always explaining it to people. Oh, really? Like, I, they're just space heaters that run accounting software. So you're not having to walk through the economics <laughs> of it. Yeah, that's awesome. They're space heaters that run accounting software. Yeah, and we rent out slots. Man, I'm gonna start trying to describe it that way. Think about. It. I mean, it, it's uh, we get paid by the minute. And they're space heaters that run accounting software. Man, QuickBooks by the minute. Yeah. Keep it simple. I'm gonna try that. Because they get on to get nitty gritty, like down dirty hash price. How's that impact? I don't understand this. Well, but Bitcoin's this much. I don't, it doesn't make any sense for it to be that much. And I'm like, I don't know. Decline curve, man. It's a decline curve. <laughs> that's, 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 that good, that's not yeah. a, bad, so. a bad way to look at it. But I think it's really, um, and honestly, like the knowledge, like it, it keeps rippling out, mm -hmm. right? Like education is improving year yeah. after year. And that's why we spend so much time at all the, at, at the energy yeah. conferences yeah. is educating you, yeah. it starts with mm -hmm. the smile you get when you say hey right. it's a space here that runs accounting software because <laughs> they know that's not a, the whole yeah. story but it gets them interested and they can they can put that in their mental framework and say and it's even easier now where you're seeing all these some of these startups coming out that are literal space yeah. eaters <laughs> right right yeah no kidding <laughs> that's true are you coming in power yeah okay good. we'll be there yeah yeah, we'll be there. We've been getting our conference schedule lined up for next year. Um, excited to come mm -hmm. and engage there. It's one of my favorite um, favorite conferences in the space because they do such a good job. You guys do such a good job blending the power and the mm -hmm. Bitcoin piece. Yeah. And, and, there's, and there's oil there as well and the yeah. gas guys. Um, but it really blends energy and Bitcoin really well. I don't, yeah. And I don't think that they're... That's tough to do. It, it, that is. You guys it's, do... It's going to be different this year. Yeah. It's tell, very tell different. Uh, once we once we hit the light off, I'll, I'll clue you guys in. Secret, right. secret yes. sauce. It's Come gonna on. be different this year in the best kind of way. It's gonna be unlike any other event you've ever been to. Well, we're excited. I want to get down to the nitty gritty. Yeah, you, you need to be talking at it, man. I'd be panel. happy to. Yeah, Let's we'll make it happen. That. I'd love to. I'd love to have Boom, a mm -hmm. you're on the list. Perfect. Yeah, dog. So, well, bro, thank you for uh, coming and blessing us with your your very detailed knowledge i seriously i don't think there's anybody on the power side of it that i think knows it better than you so well i appreciate I've, that i think we're there's I've certainly a lot of power people i know that are a lot better at this than i am so well when you combine <laughs> the power and infrastructure side i i don't know i i really haven't i haven't met them so well appreciate i've that. i always enjoy listening to you and you're funny and you got some dope suits too, man. I got to I got to he keeps me on my toes, man. I got to I got to set my suit game up another one. Man, I need to bring a powder blue one. I he oh, dude, he had this powder blue suit in Miami. I was like, "Ooh, man. We can, we can bring that bad boy out." Yeah, we can pick that sucker up in Cartagena. <laughs> and then you can wear you yeah. can wear a bright orange one. I, we'll, it, we'll, like, we can be like together. a Bitcoin dumb and dumber. <laughs> I like I'm it. Done. I I'm like done. it. We should do it. We got we got to be on stage together. Then. Yeah, yeah, we do. We need to. I'll interview. Let's do it. Yeah.
Awesome. I like it. Joe, you thank you for coming. Hey, thank you Atticon for having me. Energy, good group. I'm trying to get some deals with them too. So we'll talk about that after hey, the like excited, goes off as well. Excited to work with people. Oh. Love being love being here and love being in the space. Well, so. Thank you for coming. Um, appreciate it. And yeah, Catch man. you guys in the next one. That's it.